in this episode. When I had just started doing dental photography, I did not really know how people are getting a black background inside the patient's mouth. A contrastor is going to put the spotlight on your subject. The background as a white color background in anterior aesthetic cases, it looks very, very unnatural. Now, another reason why we choose black color contrasters as compared to any other color contrasters is that uh, and if you are placing something exactly behind the teeth, the flash that we use on our camera is going to cast a shadow. You're listening to the Dental Photography School podcast where I'll be sharing practical tips on clinical and general photography. I'm Dr. Mayur Dauda and I've been coaching dentists and dermatologists on clinical photography since 2013. If you don't want to miss out on any action, make sure to subscribe to my show because I release an episode every Saturday morning. When I had just started doing dental photography, I did not really know how people are getting a black background inside the patient's mouth. It took me a while to figure out what's actually happening. And the reason why people got a black background behind the anterior aesthetic teeth was something called as contrasters. So let us understand what is a contrastor. Contrastor is basically something that is added as a background so that your subject stands out, irrespective if it is dental photography or general photography. A contrastor is going to put the spotlight on your subject. Why do we use contrastor in intraoral photography, especially anterior aesthetic photography? The reason is quite simple. Whenever we are doing anterior aesthetic photography, We do not want any kind of distractions in the picture behind the actual teeth that we are documenting. For example, if I'm documenting lateral to lateral or canines to canines, I do not want to see the tongue in the background or the uvula in the background or any kind of pink tissues if I'm recording an anterior aesthetic case for a composite buildup or an indirect kind of a restoration. So the only way out out of this situation is to hide those particular landmarks which are the soft tissue landmarks and that can be done by holding a black background behind our teeth. Now, why do the contrasters have to be black? I completely agree that uh, it could be any color but very honestly, whenever a person looks at other person talking All he sees is darkness inside that person's mouth. And that is the reason why the pearlies or the white teeth stand out, right? So that's why the contrastor typically has to be dark in color and not bright in color. In fact, I find it really weird when I see that a couple of people have actually made the background as a white color background in anterior aesthetic cases. It looks very, very unnatural for me. It is as if somebody has kept an LED light inside the patient's mouth and it's a little funny and a little awkward. So by default or normally speaking, the background has to be black. Now another reason why we choose black color contrasters as compared to any other color contrasters is that uh, whenever we use a flash or whenever we do dental photography, we are placing something exactly behind the teeth. And if you are placing something exactly behind the teeth, the flash that we use on our camera is going to cast a shadow on the background. And that particular shadow will be fully absorbed only and only if the background is fully black in color. So the reason why we use a black color background is one, it looks more natural and two, it absorbs all the shadows. There is another secondary reason why we use a black color contrastor is that it makes the um, characteristics in the incisal third of the teeth stand out. For example, if somebody has a good amount of translucency in the incisal third, 
obviously that's going to stand out only if we have a dark background behind our teeth right it's not going to stand out if we have a bright background behind the teeth or a red color or a yellow color background behind the teeth now we have all the reasons why we use a contrastor and why a contrastor has to be black in color now let us talk about what can be used as a contrastor the ideal characteristics of a contrastor are it should be rigid it should not be flexible so that you can achieve a good amount of retraction in addition to the contrast that a contrastor gives us and number 2 it should be available in different different shapes and number 3 it has to be contraangled so that either we can place it very comfortably or it can be standing alone on its own without somebody else holding it and that's possible only if the contrastor is a contraangled contrastor now in the magic box we have two types of contrastors one is a full arch occlusal contrastor this particular full arch occlusal contrastor is available in two sizes the pediatric as well as the adult size but we mostly actually use the pediatric size even in adults because most of the times we record only the front 40th or front 60th for anterior aesthetic documentation it is only for digital smile designing cases that we want the full arch with a black background and at that particular point of time we use the bigger occlusal contrastor if we want to do lower anterior aesthetic cases we use something called as a buckle contrastor or a lingual contrastor that is also a part of the magic box the contrastor is also helpful for orthodontists because when they record molar relationship for example if you are doing if you are recording the molar relationship of the right side of the patient we do retraction of the right side of the patient and we place a contrastor on the contralateral side and record the molar relationship in direct vision so in addition to the molar relationship we also get a good black color background in front of the teeth which is not possible with uh, the other two techniques of recording a molar relationship now coming to what i have used as contrastors in the past or i still use contrastors right now in typhoidont exercise so whenever i take a workshop the first day we have a typhoidont exercise and on typhoidont it's okay if the contrastors are not autoclave because the the students or the delegates are just doing a practice session so i have used actually everything as a contrastor sometimes i even used the lens cap of my lens as a contrastor anything black could be a contrastor but inside the patient's mouth whatever you put that has to be autoclave just just be careful about that but when i'm doing typhoidont exercises sometimes i place the black color card that is an addition of the gray card sometimes i also use a uh, black color card paper sometimes i use a lens cap basically anything that's black in color can be used as a contrastor but if you want to do it inside the patient it has to be autoclavable so please use a metallic contrastor now contrastors typically have to have a matte finish and a little bit of rough surface so that the the light that's falling from the flash onto the contrastor gets redirected in different different directions thereby the chance of getting a reflection is less but many a times despite trying a lot reflections do come even on the contrastor now there's a very beautiful way of avoiding it is just flick the contrastor by a degree or two in any direction other than the direction of the flash and you will get a pure black background there is one golden rule to use your contrastor effectively and that golden rule is keep your contrastor as far away from the subject as you can and you're going to get really good results some people i have seen also get a reflection on the contrastor that looks really bad so the way out of it is to keep the contrastor as away from the subject as possible if you still get a reflection just flick the contrastor by a degree or two hopefully this particular podcast episode on contrastors would have been helpful for you If you want to know more about dental photography you're more than welcome to join our Telegram group which is a private group where we upload everything that's happening in dental photography school be it a live event or be it a recorded event a podcast release or a YouTube video release and anything like that you can also log on to dentalphotographyschool.in for blogs and FAQs on dental photography and documentation if you are enjoying the dental photography school podcast 
please 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 take one minute out of your precious time go to apple podcast google podcast or podchaser and give me a review on the daily photography school podcast until i see you next week goodbye that's all we have time for in this episode if you are getting benefited from my tips do show your love by leaving a rating and a review for tutorials on photography do check out my channel daily photography school on youtube To participate in contests and live events, join the Daniel Photography School Facebook and Telegram group. You can follow me on Instagram as Mayur underscore EOS Maestro or Daniel Photography School. I'll meet you next week. Till then, keep listening, keep sharing.